If your day is dull and if it's misty, pour yourself a glass of peaty whiskey. It'll go down a treat and even warm your feet and you will end up feeling quite frisky. <coughs> Hello there all you malt. What, what's this? What's, what's this say? Mealies. Oh, that's crap. Try something else. Hello all you malt uh, mountain alpine scapes. Yep. Haven't used that one before. Ralphie here, and welcome to Whiskey Review 94. <sighs> Nearly at 100. Not quite, but we're getting there. And uh, what have we got today? Well, I thought I would carry on <clears throat> the Isla Peated Whiskey theme from Whiskey Reviews number 92 and number 93. So for number 94, we've got one of my favourites. Kalila. Oh, hear that pop. Glug, glug, glug. Again, that coloured Isla bottle. Simple clear label. Dark coloured box. How very peated. Right. <clears throat> Kalila is one of those slightly less well-known Isla peated whiskies. It's the largest distillery in Isla, it's Kulila, substantially rebuilt and expanded in the 1970s. And a very 1970s building it is with a great big glass front overlooking the sound of Isla. Now, if you ever wondered what Kulila meant, Ila is Isla in Gaelic, and Kul in Gaelic is sound of. So this is the Gaelic word for sound of Isla. Do not say Isley. Do not say, do not say Isley. It's Isla. No S involved. No Y involved. Typical. So what can we say about this whiskey? It's uh, basically, there's plenty of it around. It's only recently in the last, within the last 10 years that became available readily as a single malt. Um, it's not considered generally up there with the firm favourites of our Beg, Lafroig and Lagavulin. They wear the crowns. Kalila wears a bonnet, a bit like me. But I like to think that uh, it's certainly not lacking in character. Characterful it is. This is quite a vegetal um, peated whiskey. It's not as intense, far from it, as... Um, your Lafroy, but there's quite a lot of peat here. It's really, on first acquaintance, an autumnal, bonfiery, slightly briny whisky, which gives you impression that you're in an orchard on a cold day. There's something slightly um, orchard fruit about it. Apples, pears, there is more than a passing touch of some fine aged white wines. I'm thinking Alsace here, and German wines. A spot of Riesling in the nose, Muscatel. And uh, the brininess is certainly more delicate than you find in the other big beefy Isla malts. On the nose, there's almost a delicate intensity. Incidentally, just out of interest, in the non-named bottles of Isla Whiskey, your Elax, your Isla Mists, your Taste of Isla, Sound of Isla, Whispers of Isla, all these 
non-distillery specified single malt whiskies that you can buy at a cheaper cost. The chances are very high that they are Kulila because there's plenty of it. Kulila incidentally along with Talisker is the linchpin. It is the foundation stone of those particularly well-known blended whiskies. Black Label, Johnny Walker Black Label <clears throat> And that blend of malt whiskey, green label, and a damn good job they do of it too. And so if, you, if you want to do an experiment, by the way, take your Khalil if you've got it and add a dash of um, Talisker. Uh, they do actually, once you get the balance right, it's really two thirds Talisker, one third Khalil. And you get a very interesting dram going on there, well worth trying bonfires it really is there's something when I say autumn, autumnal ob, I'll try that again when I say autumnal you have to be in the northern hemisphere so if you're Canadian Scandinavian Russian Ukrainian Amer North America North States of America particularly New England you'll understand where I'm coming from there's a lovely sweet slightly oily nature to this there's a touch of understated sophistication. Let's have a taste. Now this is bottled at 43%, should be 46 but there we go. And uh, they've eased off the caramel, which is a relief. Hmm. Oh, it's lovely, pungent. You immediately get this slightly fire infused warming glow it really has a tremendous glow as soon as it arrives that almost it runs right along your tongue and down your throat and leaves the flavor behind apple smoke it's almost peat in in white port so there's a sweetness and a dryness together i, I think you've probably gathered that i do love this stuff now, that's why, one of the reasons I love this is because in the independent bottlings, standards are generally pretty, pretty good. So whether it be Gordon McPhail, Signatory, Cadenhead, all the independent bottlers, I've only once in 10 years come across an independent bottling of Kulila, which left me slightly below the line. Now that's good going. It's consistently a good whiskey. And occasionally in the independent bottles, because they're presenting as it should be, cask strength, no chill filtration, no caramel added. You're getting it at its best. And, and it, can be, it really can be quite spectacular. Ask the connoisseurs, they'll tell you. Hmm. Citrus, spicy, different from the others, and the peat plays its part. It doesn't call the shots, the peat's more integrated. A fizziness, a lovely, gentle, glowing heat. What are we going to give this? I'm going to give this 89 out of 100. It's a malt mark. I would have given it more, guys, but. It's been ten a toned down with the bottling strength at 43%. should be 46 Incidentally, if you look hard enough, you may find the cask strength version of Kulila. It's up in the 50% odd. And, and the official bottling, let me tell you, it's an absolute firework show. Cordite, carbolic, the lot. Uh, when I get hold of a bottle, when I'm able to pin one down, I'll share it with you and let you know. Right, one more sniff and then it's time to go. Time for my tea. <sighs> Strong and yet delicate. At the same time, not together. Excellent stuff. See you soon.